guys, Seth Fuller, your favorite MMA judge here. Today I'm going to talk about a familiar topic. There's a UFC fight. Daniel Cormier thinks the judging was terrible, decides it was robbery. Aaron Bronstetter tweets that the judges have no experience and therefore it must have been a robbery. Then the robbery report gets on and finds a way to do mental gymnastics to make it a robbery. And only one person in the entire world comes to defend those judges. That's yours truly. Uh, I am a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, regular practitioner, and have been in the MMA community uh, for most of my adult life. The UFC card I'm talking about is UFC Vegas, specifically Jocelyn Edwards versus Lucia Pudilova. And Daniel Cormier from the very first round thought that Pudilova had clearly won the first two rounds. The judges there in Kansas City gave Edwards a split decision. And here I am, again, being the only one to defend these judges. And am I doing it because I'm a judge myself and because I was similarly criticized? No, that I, I know you won't believe it. That's truly not the reason. It's not even to protect the judges because they won't face any repercussions for this. Um, they, that just isn't how it works. The only time you, you face repercussions if you do like I did and speak out. But in any event, I'm not doing it for that. I know this sounds silly and you probably don't believe it, but I truly love this sport and I want the correct fighter to get the correct decision. And I think that when a, uh, when a, the MMA or, or the UFC specifically or any, any sporting event looks like it's corrupt, that invites corruption because the corruption can camouflage itself as just the normal set of events. So in other words, if, 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 if you think that this fight is corrupt, then it's very easy to pay a judge off because then that, that payoff hides in the general corruption and general... Um, incompetence of the judges and refs but again mostly i just <laughs> all of that is to serve that i want the fighters who try so hard and who are the ones putting their lives on the line putting the health on the line to get the right decision and be able to depend on the right decision and it's ridiculous don't leave it up to the judges should not be a saying we should have competent judges and again i do know that there is incompetent judges and bad judging and by I think the only way to fight that is to come on here and to expose it and to be the one insider who says, no, we can't change things for the better from the inside. Only through transparency and talking about this reasonably can we see what are the bad decisions, who are the bad judges, and what are good decisions that just appear or maybe just close decisions that people are angry about. So what is a robbery? That's the big question here. And a robbery is when as objectively as possible, as much as we can talk about objective, and, and I'll discuss that, but objectively, the judges got the wrong decision. So it's almost, there's no overarching grand god of MMA to say what, who won the fight or what the decision is. So how do we, how do we get to that objectivity? Well, I believe that's pretty easy. So there's, I look for two things when I, when I talk about a robbery. First off, I look at at agreement among the expert media, people who know what they're talking about, um, maybe even fighters or ex-fighters or experienced people, you know, journalists, um, fans who truly understand every aspect of not only the MMA world, but the judging criteria. I look for an agreement among them, not only of the fight, but of the rounds. That's the beautiful, the one advantage of having these five minute rounds besides giving the fighters a rest. But if we were scoring this for the whole fight, it's much harder to break it down and see where things went wrong, where people depart. The good thing about it is, to me, if a third of the media is agreeing on that, is saying that fighter a won rounds one and three. A third of them are saying they won round one and two. And a third of them are saying they round two and three. Well then, come on, that is not a robbery. That's just a close fight that we all disagree on. Which brings me to the second criteria of a robbery is that opinion, that, that unified opinion among the experts, among the journalists, has to then be affirmed with actual evidence and statistics, such as striking, such as control time, such as um, you know how many times they were knocked down, such as well, how many submissions there were. And so that you have to have that because if everyone agrees and then, but like in this fight, I think this fight is the perfect example. It doesn't seem 
to be matched by the actual objective data that we have, then that doesn't make sense. That's not a robbery either. So do I think this is a robbery? No, I can I could tell it wasn't a robbery just logically by looking at exactly the first criteria that I talked about, agreement among everybody. And there is a lot of agreement, and this is why this is such a, such a good case because it's, it's, we limit the, the factors. There is a lot of agreement in the media as to who won what. Now again, most of these media members are listening or watching the UFC either from their house or with an earbud that you can hear the announcing. I don't think a lot of them are listening uh, without that announcer present. But regardless, they don't have as good a seat as a judge. Every single media member had Pudilova winning the second round, which the judges did too. So they're agreed on there, no robbery of round two. Every single media member had round one for Pudilova. All three judges had round one for Ed Edwards. So right there, that is as robbery as it gets. That is seemingly, on the first little part, a robbery. On round three, nearly every media member is scoring the fight, nine out of 11, had Edwards winning the third round. Now, this is interesting because that means in round three, the judge who scored it for Pudilava robbed Edwards of round three. If we break it down by rounds, Henry Guerry, I, hope I'm, I doubt I'm saying that right, but he's the only one who scored the win for Pudilova. He's the split decision against, and he scored round three for Pudilova and nearly every media member scored round three for Edwards. So isn't that him robbing Edwards of a round three of a unanimous decision? So that brings us to round one, the robbery round. So we have this weird thing where the media thinks that Edwards went, won round three and Pudilova won round one, and they're mad at the judges who thought that Edwards won three round three so when I look at whether it's objectively a robbery, whether they, they meet the qualifications of the robbery, there's already some, some weird results where I can't point and say, look, everybody thinks that Edwards won round three and Pudilova won round one. No, the judges differ from the media in two different rounds. And in fact, one of them, the, the judge had it opposite of what, or opposite of what the media thought for round three. So automatically I'm thinking, well, so it's not clear. There's no clear winner here except for round one. So what are we talking about in round one? Well, again, now we go to the second step, which is there is there objective stats and facts to back it up? Well, there has to be, right? Can't say that every 12, 11 uh, media members watch this first round and all, and Daniel Cormier thought that for sure Pudilova won the round, whereas all three judges thought Edwards won the round. And so I look at the Rob report, which is supposed to clarify that, and, and there's some interesting things there that, that I'd like to point out, and again, just to discuss, to really delve into whether this is a robbery or not. Let's look at the media tweets that Mr. Lee is citing in his robbery report. Several of the media members thought that one round one was so super close that it could have gone either way. And all of them had round three for Edwards. So again, the media, while they're agreeing on the score, several of them don't agree that it was a robbery. So to me, that's not a robbery. When you have the media members that you're citing saying that was a really close score. But Seth, you can't change the rules. You said round one of the media was agreed and the judges were not. They were opposite the judges. Correct. So now, again, let me go to Mr. Lee and the robbery review. Well, he talks, what do the numbers say? The numbers say Edwards Henley won the significant strike battles. Round one, 17 to eight. 17 to eight. So this is the round that the robbery happened. Do we have objective facts to say that the it, it was wrong, that these judges were completely off base. Well, no, the objective fact says an 11, 11 strike difference in significant strikes overall. And then he goes on to say, and this is the crazy part where the mental gymnastics comes in, what's more important, she was only 
Pudilova was only credited with two ground strikes in the opening round. He says, in my eyes, she seemed to land plenty of ground strikes, but curiously, she was only credited with two in the opening round. If the judges saw her ground work the same way as the stat keepers, that may explain why they leaned towards Edward's early stand-up work in round one. Wait, you mean if a judge sees that 11-strike difference with Edwards, I think everyone agreeing, including Daniel Cormier, Edwards landing more effective strikes, harder strikes, more eff- effective striking, and then on the ground, the judges saw only two strikes landed by the person on top, and therefore they didn't counter the 17, <laughs> they didn't counter the effective stand-up striking and rule that the effect of stand-up striking was negated by two significant strikes on the ground. I don't. This is what I'm, what I'm talking about. Is there a robbery at this point? There's no robbery. It's not a robbery. You're saying that the stats say that Edwards won the striking. Okay. Well, it's not just about striking. And in fact, I've talked about this time and time again. It's about effective striking and effective grappling, but effective grappling is in terms of damage. And again, time after time, what's funny is I I just ran across a 2012 article that talked about how MMA was judging was improving because they took away from the takedowns, just taking someone down and controlling it being the um, deciding factor. And they talked about damage on the ground, but it's not just strikes. So you can't just go on significant strikes. It's also effective grappling. And effective grappling has to do with damage, which is ground and pound, which again, according to the stat keepers, what the judges aren't. We're not talking about the judges said there's only two stats, two, two strikes. That's what the stats say. And we can look at that. But more importantly, the effective grappling is submissions also. And how many submission attempts were there by Pudilova using her effective grappling? Zero. None. When you have no submission attempts, all you have left is ground and pound and stand-up striking. That's all you have left. Or high, high, high impact or high elevation slams. But if you don't have any of those, if you have a soft takedown, then it doesn't matter how long you spin on top if you didn't use it to ground and pound or effective submission or let's say even at least advanced position to a completely advantageous position like mount, which Pudelow never did, then you can't say that round wasn't won by Edwards. Just looking at the stats and what you're saying about the stats, it doesn't matter what you saw. What do you mean what you saw? Go back and look at it. Show me the strikes. It's very easy. If you're going to accuse this of a robbery, say these judges are incompetent, post that they don't have any experience, and just basically badmouth these people, and then discredit their work in regards to all their other decisions, and discredit their abilities, basically saying they shouldn't judge again, which is roundly what you'll find in the comments and pretty much what Daniel Cormier seemed to be hinting at. But when if you're going to do this, you can't leave it on like, oh, well, but okay, so maybe she did win that round. No, if she, you agree, if she won that round and you agree she won the third round, then she won the fight, not a robbery. And if several of your media that you're citing says that says that indeed she could have won the first round or could have won the third round <laughs> and did win the third round, then, then it's not a robbery. And we have to stop this. And because we're undermining the sport, this is going to be used as here is bad judging. And it's it's all just fluff and 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 one essentially one guy saying that he didn't like the outcome even though he cites things that aren't in the judging criteria. And by that, I mean Daniel Cormier and being on top. So how do all these media members see it, Seth? How how does that happen? Well, I'll tell you. They do see. It's simple. They saw she was on top. They saw she controlled on, by control, she was in her Edwards guard for most of the time. The one time she started to enact a pass in the first round, uh, Edwards got up which Edwards doesn't get points for, but then she gets points for the strikes that she then landed. But that's how it works. This wasn't a robbery. And the minute we have 
Daniel Cormier having everyone convinced that this is a robbery. We are doing a disservice to the sport. But more importantly, think about Jocelyn Edwards. She gets no credit for outstriking her opponent by 11 strikes, for making sure her opponent couldn't land strikes on the ground, and for making sure her put her opponent couldn't advance to a better position where she could land damage. She essentially won a round by her hard work, dedication, and skill, and you are robbing her for of it. You're trying to take it away from her in the eyes of the public, and by making it a public spectacle, you are saying that she didn't deserve that win. There's no doubt about it. And if she didn't deserve that win, I'm the first one to say, okay, climb on the mountaintops and say that. Go tell her you did not deserve that win. I have looked at people I judged in the eyes who I had judged as a loss on a close round. I've also looked them at people I had judged as a loss that had won the fight, and I will tell them, I do not think you won round three and five, and here's why. And so the things we do as judges, these journalists and these commentators don't have to do. And they get in there and they say, do you think the won the fight? Well, yeah, she thinks she won the fight. It's unfair for you to take that moment from her, and it's unfair to take her that moment later on. And so that's what I have to say without even going into the fight. So let's go into the fight and let's clear it out and really take a look since the only round that was in dispute is round one. That's all we're going to look at because all of the, every single one of the uh, media agreed that round three went to Edwards, even though the judge who judged it for Pudilova didn't. That's weird. But we're, the only questionable round is round one. And since MMA Roundup can't quite say why they won, let's just take a look, a fresh look at it. See who won and why. Keith Schillen, again, one of the people cited, says, it has been a long time since the commentary team was that mad about a decision. Do you agree with it? I had it 29-28 Pudilova, but I am also okay with the first round going for Edwards because Pudilova didn't do that much damage from the top. Well, then that's not a robbery. Sorry, robbery report. If you're citing these people, you got to at least do some delving. I know that's, it's not my job. I'm not a journalist. This is what gets me so angry about this. And I'm just an MMA judge. I do my job. I show up. And then these journalists go off and, and do crazy stuff. And if you call them on it, I'm just going to tell you, they make a weird excuse like, oh, no, I really did look up this person's record, but I just uh, decided to say they were ex- inexperienced anyways, despite their ridiculously experienced record. In any event... This is not a robbery. Here's Dane Fox. I agree with the commentary team that Pudilova won, but it wasn't a terrible decision. Not a robbery. Based on damage alone, Edwards had a strong case for the first round. This is what the judges decided. Combat Press says takedown and ground strikes won the first round for Pudilova. Ground strikes too? That's what CompuStrike said. That's the official count from the UFC computers. And we'll look at it, but how how it did the two strikes win, win the first round when the total strikes was an 11-strike differential? Now, this one here is the most interesting. Ben Duffy scored round two, 10-8 Pudilova. Now, nobody did that, but this these are the people we're saying are better than the judges. I'm not saying he was wrong. I'm just saying this. Consi- I need the consistency to call it a robbery. And again, all three of these judges here for sure, dog, scored it for the third round for Edwards. So we're not talking about the third round, which is the one judge who had Pudilova winning scored it for Pudilova. So are they the worst judge? Aren't they the bad judge in this case? Don't you think they're doing it wrong? At least in that one round, but it's okay that they did it right in the wrong in the first round because in the end, the results are what matter, right? None of it that makes sense. Okay, so this is where I really get it, get, it gets interesting and in what we're talking about, which is Sean Sheehan, um, which is one of the people cited by Lee in his report. Watch back round one of Pudilova versus Edwards. Look, they weren't a million miles apart. Well, okay, so it wasn't a robbery. But hugely overscoring the Edwards shots, again, official numbers, 17 to 8, is the only way to give her that round. Both landed two standing. Let's look at that. I would The official stats would absolutely disagree. 
Pudaloa landed six or seven on the ground. The official stats would absolutely disagree. We can check it out. Maybe he's right. Edwards, one or two on the way up. Okay. Again, I, we got to watch it. Pudalova round. All right. He watched this back. No, this is not. He watched it back, just like we're going to do. Keep that in mind. These are the people we're talking about. The angle. I would say that it did land from the body punch. So she landed a knee and about maybe four significant strikes, maybe a little more. Edwards, to me, landed about eight. I would have Edwards ahead at this time right now in damage. Favorite. Okay, in the black. so let's start the punch. That I would call an even exchange. Pudilova threw a left hand. Edwards threw a right low kick. They both landed one on the chest, one on the leg, probably about even. Pudilova shoots in, Edwards shrugs it off, lands about five. And I slowed it down even though there was a hiccup in my feed. To me, all those landed, but they didn't show any effect. What I'm looking for there is did Ed, did Pudilova's head snap back? Did did um, How far were they? Again, this is important because I can be off position. A lot of times judges are off position, and they have to go by their years of experience, how the distance, the um, whether the head snaps back, whether they were in position to throw the punch, and whether we actually saw the punch. I don't completely discard a punch that looked like to what I had it landed. But if it doesn't cause a snap back, doesn't cause a reaction, Action, then I really don't regard it as a, as, as, a, as an important punch. In this case, it looked to me like the last three landed of that, the first two uh, rights and the last couple of uh, 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 punches landed in that series to about two of Pudilovas. So at this point, I put um, Edwards about three to four solid punches, decent punches, uh, significant strikes, if you want to call it that, ahead at this point. That's the thing about Edwards. She's never afraid to throw down. Mm -mm. Oh. Again, I would say that missed. If it hit, it was grazing. Again, it's hard to tell because we're looking at the the, the wrong side of her, her back, and so you can't tell. But but Pudilova didn't react, so I would say that's a miss. And she's not afraid to miss stick to a diet in training <laughs> camp either. There's a shot by Pudilova. Yeah, Edwards defends. Again, no points she here either way unless we're talking Pudilova about control. Too. Superior grappling, Pudilova nice showed that, landed a decent right oh, yeah. knee, and I want you to, that decent right knee, decent right knee is important later, um, only because I've watched this before, but then um, Pudilova actually came up with one punch. So now I'd say that Edwards is at least three decent punches ahead and one uh, pretty solid knee. Areas that you would imagine... I think that landed too for for um, for Edwards. It, I couldn't tell if Pudilova actually landed, but I will say that I think it landed way much more significantly if it did land for Pudilova than it landed for Edwards. Uh, I think Edwards again. So now Edwards is up probably four decent punches and a knee. Pudilova tried to take advantage of is the wrestling. She was much improved when she came back to the UFC. Those are nothing. That lazy kick I give a little bit to, um, I believe, you know. That one landed on the arm. Again, a low kick and a miss. These are all little significant strikes that goes in my brain. I'd say those are two misses. Didn't see the other one landed. I don't think that one landed. Yeah, Puda Lova, I like the way she sets up the takedowns as well. You know, she's very disciplined, stays at range. Throw some straight shots, chips away with a low kick. That was kicks. a decent low kick, nice but not a lot there. All Same, the that was a complete miss. It it so well. Again, Try back there, to low kick. There's the knee. So now I put her a knee and a punch. So now I put Edwards even on knees and leg strikes and up about three punches after that punch we just saw right there. Edwards was wise to it. Edwards is generally... That's with that takedown. So now we got Edwards about three solid punches in. So let's talk about again where how did CompuBox or CompuStrike come up with two and, and these media personalities come up with uh, way more.
if you're bigger, so let's when see. You get that so here, Edwards is throwing these little pity pat punches again, building up, kind of like a, like a real weak leg shot. I put those in my brain, especially when they get like 10 or 12. That's a decent, again, I wouldn't say significant at all, but you just got to put it in your brain as a judge, as, as, as something. So if she keeps landing those over and over, it strikes. Now, more importantly, um, Pudilova is likely to land some similar ones and you can kind of even them out. But right now, on the ground, Edwards has landed many more strikes. Pudilova hasn't landed any that I've seen. I wouldn't call Edwards more. Again, I'm not saying they're significant. I'm saying, but for sure, on the ground, there's no doubt. Here comes Pudilova landing two or three. That one didn't even hit, but again, so now she's catching up. These little pitter-pat punches, she's probably like a third of the way there. She's got to keep doing that in order to even out. Attempts one, complete miss. And now, this is important. Because if we're talking about effective grappling, again, when we're talking about damage, we're talking things like submission attempts and um, exhaustion, so like really putting, crushing somebody, um, and we're talking about uh, ground strikes. For sure, Edwards is ahead on the ground strikes, just like she was on the standing. Uh, and she has, if you're talking about control and effective grappling that's not damaging, she has retained her guard, which in jujitsu, in grappling, is, is improving a position. Uh, so she went from half guard to guard. That is going up the jujitsu ladder. That is improving position. And again, she's still ahead on these little bitty ground strikes that aren't significant and on the stand-up strike. But we saw in Pudilova's return, she is much better. So now we got, she's holding on to these hands, trying to prevent Pudilova from catching up with these strikes because a de couple of decent of these will do it. Now watch that. This is where I think some of these media people saw maybe Daniel Cormier. But she landed almost none of them. Again, I'm going to rewind it back just a little bit so you can see that. And you see, Jocelyn just tried Didn't to land. She tries to buck up and move Pudilova. Did not land. We saw in Pudilova's return, she is much better on the ground than she was in her first run in the UFC. She does a great job of landing elbows from the ground and really in Dolan. Miss, 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 miss. All blocked or missed. All blocked on the arms or missed. That one got through and again, a little punch. So she caught one more. Missed that elbow, completely blocked on the arm, didn't land at all. To the UFC. She went five and one between stints between 2020 and 2022 to get back. And she just couldn't find her rhythm in the weight class. The that that there, did land somewhat, and, and Edwards came Alabama back with two for her one. Pounds. So uh, still young, 28 years old, can really bring it. Miss, and miss, miss. A better 20, 20, I'm going to show it to you again in slow motion back. just so you see it. And she just couldn't so I'm not crazy. Blocked class. completely. She lands there, one, two, blocked. Completely Serena missed. Nail. Maybe lands on the she chest. To That's it. So, uh, still young, then miss. Old, really bring it. <laughs> miss. <And Aaron laughs> that was a miss. Maybe, maybe glanced off the head on that last one. But I slowed that down just to show you what it's, us MMA judges have to monitor in person, but it's what the CompuStrike showed. Now again, look at that. I slowed it down for you. I'm going to replay it back real quick because this is important as a judge. Now, this is not my computer. This is the UFC frame. I think she landed that right up good. Boom. That looked like it landed to me. One in the boob and the chest. That hurts. She doesn't get up the whole time. Daniel Cormier is saying how terribly she's doing. But again, what is that up kick worth? How many of those punches from Pudilova, which she was behind on anyways, is that up kick worth? And again, CompuStrike shows it. All right. Get caught, but she's gonna get caught here and she's losing the round and being dominated so far so she's down on the ground again and the crowd do again not she's gone from by the way tonight. advanced I mean, guard to half guard to give her some credit for the control she reversed what she's edwards did so now they're about even on as far as yeah, advancing in uh, in grappling but pudilova has there. been on top she advances to side to mount as she advances the mount, Edward turns it over and starts landing punches. Now again, I'm going to slow this down. One on the arm, then two on the face, three in the head, four in the head, five in the head, six in the head, seven, eight, one in the boob. 
She timed okay. it perfectly. Nice work by Edwards. Again, we're talking about effective grappling. Pudilova, Edwards gets back to guard. Pudilova uses her her kind of ground and pound in a missing, but she uses it as a distraction to pass the guard. And then she gets past the guard to side control, to half guard, gets to side control quickly, and gets to mount. All of that effective grappling, but again, not damaging grappling. Then the minute she gets to mount, Edward uses a push off, bridges, turns into her, controls her body up against the cage, is able to stand up. Not only is just able to stand up after bridging and getting out of that bad position, but uses it to land six Again, significant strikes, not the end of the world, not great, not KO type strikes, but certainly more powerful than anything landed on the ground. She was already three strikes ahead, three to four strikes ahead when she got on the ground. She, in my opinion, Edwards was the more damaging fighter on the ground with that several up kicks and then the pitter pat punches, which I'm not counting big, but she did more pitter pat punches than Pudilova did for sure. Pudilova missed nearly all of hers, which is again, Compu Strike agrees, and I don't know how Sean went back and didn't see that. But now we're to she's what eleven strikes ahead, which is what Compu Strike has said, and that's at this point. And maybe I counted wrong. Maybe I saw one that looked like it landed. Compu Strike did a more better analysis with more angles and did it. But again. She was on the ground. The reason Daniel Cormier thought she won the first round is because effective grappling. She took her down, and the reason they all said was ground and pound. Every single one of these media people who said Edwards Law said it was because Pudilova was landing ground and pound that she wasn't, and the stats show that. So now they've stood up. Let's go from there. See, maybe Pudilova turns it around. There's a kick, decent punch, so she's... A little too so late, she's though. back to maybe a 10 punch Edwards, deficit miss the majority of the round are back. and it gives gives some credit to that teep kick but to the stomach a right? little no bit not much about the same as those punches if she's taken down by miss miss on the way in. pushing Pudilova, off who's to go doing again this is all control place. time which only counts if damage is Edwards, even and i don't see any, re any reason to think that damage was even a little pity pat punches again attack, the same as uh, Pudilova landed on the ground but sh but Edwards just objectively oh, has landed more well. she goes for a strike doesn't land those two punches and that's the end of the round that's the round we've gone through all of round one and again compu stats the the computers everyone says that that uh Pudilova lost what would she win? She'd win the effect of grappling because she made it to mount for a second. Because she took Edwards down and Edwards was able to get back to guard. Then when Pudilova st actually does advance in grappling, she Edwards stands up. And here's the most important part. Uses her grappling to what? Deal damage. Which is Pudilova had done that with her grappling and had got on top and landed that ground and pound. Which, again, you can go back and look and slow it down. She doesn't land. Again, I think I think Compu Strike is right. Two, two strikes is what she landed. What did she win? What did Pudilova win? And the minute you say round one goes to Edwards, then round three went to Edwards in all of the media scorecards. So how did round one? Well, here's what I'll say. I think these people... All of these media people are listening to Daniel Cormier and they get in their heads and they do their score live on tweets. And then when they go back, they use um, confirmation bias to say, yeah, I was right. Look, I went back and look, she landed a bunch. No, she didn't go slow it down. That's why, why would you go back and not slow it down? But again, that's what these journalists are supposed to do. When you write a robbery review, you're supposed to go back and say, here's why it was a robbery. Round one was, cl everybody scored round one for Pudilova, and here's why they were right. That's the second step you have to do. When you don't that one, you don't get to go, but okay, so round one was Edwards, but two and three were Pudilova. Well, you don't get to do that because then you're disagreeing with every single media member about round three. So that all this requires is good journalism. That's all I'm asking for. 
But instead, we have these people, these judges who can't stand up for themselves in front of millions of people. These these tweets, Daniel Cormier's tweets were seen by millions and millions of people that these judges were ineffective. These media people have a huge audience. The judges have almost no audience and nobody stand up for them except me and they can't stand up for themselves because you get put in timeout like I do and maybe I'll get put in timeout again for this. Why? Because I want transparency. Again, this isn't about judges being right. This is about if you want to change MMA for the better, then you have to call the strikes and the balls as they are. You can't say, we need to change judging, just look at this robbery here. And then it turns out you didn't do a thorough job of confirming that this was a robbery, and you're just scapegoating these two judges because they are inexperienced, because they've only judged you know, dozens and dozens of local cards, meaning hundreds of fights locally, and you think that UFC is like so much harder to judge, it's not, and then you you scapegoat them and you don't do a job just as a journalist because you're not a journalist, you're a sports writer. So, but if you're going to actually affect a change, if you're going to get these bad judges out of here and get these bad calls fixed, then you have to make sure that the bad calls are the bad calls and the good calls are good. That's all you have to do. The minute we can agree that Matt Hamill versus Michael Bispings was a terrible decision, then we have something we can agree on and go from there. The minute you can agree a judge does it terribly wrong, and then you could say, well, they're the piano player at the, at the commissioner's church is the only reason they're there. Then you can have a basis of changing things. But when you come to these commissions with how terrible and inexperienced these judges are, and you have judges who are at UFC 1, you have Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt judges, you have judges who, who've judged dozens, and Invicta was at Kansas City a lot. So you probably, these judges have more experience judging women's fight than most UFC judges. So all I'm saying is the minute you have this, you look foolish and nobody, the commission is not going to listen to you. They don't want to listen to you and they're not as long as you say foolish stuff like this because we all get together and we all talk about this and everyone agrees those judges, all three made the right decision on round one and then we just discard your opinion. It's not a robbery. It's not only not a robbery, but you're the robbers. You're the ones taking it from Miss Edwards saying that she didn't win. And then you have no, you don't have clean hands. So they're never going to listen to you. Instead, they're going to keep the same old guard and keep making sure that people like me don't speak out and the, and the, and the bad judges will stay in and the good judges will get punished if they step out of line. So they'll all stay in line and nothing gets done because there's no transparency and this, there's censorship, which prevents the public from understanding what the real problems to judging are. And you won't get real solutions like changing the scoring system. You just won't because when you come to it and you say, well, this is an example of when the scoring system goes, goes wrong, but it isn't. It just actually isn't. And if you would have done your homework, you would know that we're never going to change it for the better. So I'm sorry I'm ranting. You know, this is my thing. Uh, thank you guys for listening. If, leave in the comments how stupid I am, how you're glad that I was gone for eight months of judging and not able to do this, what I love, because uh, I spoke out for myself and now maybe I should be, you know, uh, put on timeout again for another eight months because of a uh, this video but regardless leave your comments below how stupid i am how smart i am whatever you want agree disagree leave your comments and uh i hope you have a good day and i hope um you at least maybe got something out of this see you later